absolutely love when my computer blue screens. All right. Cars are rolling, though. We're getting ready for a green flag. Let me make sure I am live. We are indeed. There. Good luck, everyone. Have fun. Hopefully, you can hear me. We're on board with Brent and Gavin right now. And green flag is out. Clean start so far. Daytona, Dad. You guys have to tell me. I have no idea to know when Green Flight comes out. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely went. They definitely went before Green, so. I see, I see. Oh, boy. What does it say for penalty wise? And see here. Look at this. Oof. Oh, Gavin is going to go by Brent. Man, I don't know what I should do about Brent J kind of jumping the initial start. It's kind of tough at this point. We had people doing it in previous races, apparently. That receiving penalties. What do you think, Rob? Or are you still? I think a. Uh, well, a drive-through would be kind of harsh because that'd be race over. Yeah. I was thinking maybe like just like a three-second penalty. I guess that would probably work. Like, I did put it in the chat. Right before. Hold on, I'll have to go back and look to see how bad he jumped it. Give me a moment here. That's fine. All right, we are currently reviewing the start. But meanwhile, we got Gavin, Brent, and Luke. One, two, three. They're about four seconds ahead of Shane, who's back and forth. Oh, crud. I can't see the start because of Oh, nice. my computer crashing. All right, well, I'll go back and check it out here in a minute. Got Eddie behind Shane in fifth, Joe in sixth. Thomas running back there in eighth, and it looks like Lindy is in the pits. Not sure what's going on there. All right, well, let's I go back. Up your live stream. Let's go back and look at this start and see. Kind of where we're at with the race here. Hey, thank you, Rob. You're welcome, buddy. So let's see. We're trying to decide whether or not 
Brent has jumped the start enough to require a penalty. So let's do like a far chase here. All right, anyone who's watching the stream right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm. See, it's hard to say because I'm not. I can't tell exactly when the green flag was thrown, but I mean, obviously, he was probably when he went, the green flag went off. Well, I I don't like the shenanigans before where he jumps it, then slows down. Mm hmm Um, unless that was kind of, you know, I give people the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he was like, ah, uh, you know, we're pretty far behind. But yeah, let me, let me go back on board one more time here. Look and see. We're listening. I mean, I guess realistically, the only penalty could be a drive through. But, like I said, that would, uh. That's why I was just kind of thinking of time penalty, but we would just have to enforce that ourselves at the end. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it does kind of speed up a little bit. It does kind of seem like he gives everyone a chance to kind of catch back up, but. That's a tough one. Maybe your three second penalty is uh, fair enough then. And then just make it known that uh, any further jumps or anything not maintaining pace is uh, going to be a drive through. Yeah. Really drive it home. All right, let's make sure we're back on live. Back to TV one here. We'll see what's going on. We got Gavin still in the lead. And he's out on Brent by 1.1 seconds or so. He's got Luke right on his tail. Eddie has moved into fourth. Joe's in the fifth. Shane has fallen back into sixth. Not sure what happened. I was looking at that. And then there is Lindy in the pits. And then whoever was seventh, Thomas, I think, was in here. He is either fallen out or left the race, unfortunately. I did not see a wreck, Lindy. I did not. All right, so what the uh, admins here have come up with is Brent will receive a three-second time penalty at the end of the race um, for not following procedure and jumping the initial start as well as not maintaining a consistent pace on the initial start as well. So hopefully you understand, Brent. Hopefully, uh, you know. We can move on and it shouldn't be really a big penalty. It's pretty much one spot at this point for him. As you guys can see here we got Gavin who's pulled out to a nice lead over Brent. Luke in third, about two seconds back. And then Eddie is chilling there in fourth with Joe behind him. Let's see, let's find a good uh, static shot. I know Gavin likes some static shots. 
Oh, maybe we don't really have any good static shots at this track. That's unfortunate. Unfortunate, Lindy. There should be at least one fast repair, but... Maybe you had multiple wrecks I did not see. Is Gavin up here in the lead. Lucas gotten around. Brent... But Brent is still holding a three plus second gap to the car behind him. So in the end, the penalty might not really make any difference. We'll wait and see. Shane's gotten back around Joe. Good battle here for fourth with Eddie, Shane, and Joe. Fourth, fifth, and sixth. Oh. Unfortunately, Matthew Lindy got a meatball. Got his fast pair and then had a bit of a wreck again. Oh, that's unfortunate, bud. We appreciate you being out here nonetheless. Oh! oh that was... Brent off. Massive damage, unfortunately. What happened to him? Let's go back and look and see. Oh, went off in that corner. A better camera angle here. Oh, loose head on to the wall for Brent. Things bad to worse. Our apologies, Brent. Looks like he's going to be able to get it back to the pits and get his fast repair. Yep, indeed he did. So he's getting that fast repair. Maybe he has chat muted, doesn't even know he has a penalty. It's always a possibility as well. Go back to our live scene here. We're on board with Gavin. Hey, look at that. He's got a nice little Daytona Dead logo there. Right in the camera view. Love to see that. So now he's got a couple, almost three second lead over Luke. There's Luke here running second. And Luke's got a nice, comfortable gap for himself over Shane. Who does not have a very comfortable gap over Joe. Only about half a second back there. As Joe gets a little loose out of that corner. Oh, Joe pushed a little bit wide. Behind Shane. So Shane trying to get a podium finish here and keep the points race interesting. What was the gap last time I looked from last race? Let's see if I can pull it up for everyone here. Watching Joe looking inside of Shane. Not quite there. Gives the spot back. Or gives the position back, I guess I should say. This part got to look a little strange at first, but let me try to get it set up properly. Ready went around, I think. Uh-oh. Yep. Hey, you guys aren't going to be able to see the points. But it's pretty tight. Shane, I think, only trails Gavin by about 18 points or something like that. Go back Luke and see what happened. Running. Luke might be running down uh, Gavin. Really? That would be massive stuff. Oh, yep, Eddie with a bit of a half spin, it looks like there. Maybe just on brakes too hard. Nice save, though, overall. Very nice. Joe and Shane about to have a nice little dog fight here. 
Yeah, they've been right by each other the whole time. Yeah, Luke has closed down the gap by a couple tenths. You guys can see the gap's about 2.2, 2.3 now. Gavin could just be on cruise control. These guys do need to stop and change tire compounds. It's been a couple races since we've had to do that. Meanwhile, Brent has been able to get around Eddie. So Brent's looking to make up some time again. He will have that three second penalty, but that won't matter right now for his position. He'll still maintain fifth. There's Eddie back there recovering from that spin. I, oh, he did pit. Okay, so Eddie has got the pit done. And it looks like he is now on alternates. He's going to have to make him go a long ways, though. He's got about 17 laps left. Meanwhile, the gap still shrinking ever so slightly from Luke to Gavin. It's down to two seconds. It's flat now. There goes Eddie chasing Gavin down. Go back here to Shane and Joe. They're still pretty much right there with each other. Go on board with Joe here and watch him try to track down Shane. This is the fight I'm watching. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, these guys are going going pretty hard. This is a uh, for the like two laps I didn't practice. This track is tough with these cars. A lot of high speed corners. And Joe was saying how slow he was before the race started. I don't think so. He's he does look like he's falling a little bit behind Shane at this point, but still within striking distance. Oh yeah. Oh, pushing a little wide perhaps. Watch the hands at work here with Joe Demoisic. Hopefully I'm saying that right, Joe. We'll go on board with Shane here as we look back towards Joe. I'm going to switch scenes real quick and I will be right back as I go to the bathroom. Hi, Twitch. Looks like Luke has run down uh, 
Gavin. Again. Should be pretty exciting to watch this battle. Come back just in time to see Luke hitting the pits. Shane also pulling in the pits right here. So they come in with about 13 laps to go. Luke's down in the way. He's got alternates on. The gap had looked like it maybe shrunk a little bit more from the last time I saw it. He's going to come out on those cold tires. Going to have to be careful. Joe will cycle through the second. Does Gavin pit this time? Let Joe lead the lap. We'll have to look and see we're on board with Gavin now. I think those tires are hurting pretty bad right now. Although. On Gavin? Yeah. Yeah, I just saw him push wide into the grass. But he's hanging on. We'll see here. As he will come by around the last corner, does he duck into the pits? Yes, he cannot afford to let Luke gain that ground on those fresh tires. Does Joe stay out till he lap? Will he even have the opportunity or does Gavin pass the start finish line? Yeah, but did pass the start finish line. Unfortunate, but Joe might be able to Come around and lead the next lap. We're watching Luke here. We'll see where he comes out in relation to Gavin. Oh no, Gavin spins and wrecks. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Go back and look. I missed it there. Wow, on pit exit, Gavin. Throwing Just it away. Yeah, it just gooses it. Oh no, luckily able to keep it away from Luke flying by. He does look like he has a little bit of damage. Might come up, come in and get it repaired. So that's going to hand the lead to Luke once Joe comes in and pits. Joe's having a bit of a moment there as we went back on board with him. We'll go back and look at that. Oh, Joe, what a save. What an absolutely beautiful save right there. Didn't look like much, unit. but man. And Joe's coming in now to get his pit stop done. So we'll absolute go back here. Unit of a save. So now back on board with Joe. We'll go with Luke here as he will now assume the lead with Joe making his pit stop. Gavin is coming in for his quick repair. We'll see where Shane comes out in relation to Joe. He's able to easily clear him. It's not a move Shane in the second. Joe will be third. Gavin's just now hitting his pit stall. This is what Shane's looking for in the point series, though. He needs a couple mistakes from Gavin. This could be one of them. But then again, Gavin does have pretty high throwaway races, so if this becomes one of his throwaway races, it might not be too big a deal, but any little help Shane can get, he will take. He's going to have to make it around 10 more laps, nice and clean. He does have a five-second gap to Joe. Brent has about a one-second gap to Gavin. So as it stands, Brent is sitting fourth, but would move down to fifth with the penalty. We will monitor that and see if he can pull away from them. As that should be about 10 to go now. This field quickly went from 8 to 6 as Thomas either dropped out or crashed and then Lindy had a couple mistakes on a very difficult track. But we'll go to uh, some TV cameras here. Oh, actually, 
some blimp view that looks pretty cool as you can see the physical gap from Luke back to Shane Gavin's able to get around Brent Shane and Joe about six seconds back. So Gavin's going to be pushing to try to catch Joe. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. It's a lot of ground to make up in a very short amount of time. These are quick laps. Pick Luke back up going around turn number one. I think Luke might be on cruise control, but Shane has closed it down. Just a little bit, maybe like half a second or so. I guess the gap to keep an eye on will be Joe to Gavin. Get some TV camera going. <clears throat> Excuse me, so Gavin has gained about a second or so on Joe. If he gains about a second a lap, that'll put him pretty much right on his bumper coming to the checkered flag. Thank you again, Rob, for the gifted subs. I do appreciate you, bud. Always, buddy. Yeah, Shane's pulling away from Joe, but Joe's holding a steady gap to Gavin, looks like. Gavin's catching, but not enough this lap. It's only dropped down about four tenths or so. But Gavin, I think, knows he can afford a bit of a uh, mulligan race. Although, so after this race, we have quite a couple, or quite a long break due to the holidays but after that we shouldn't have really any and the next race after this is auto club on january 7th and boy can anything happen for that one i don't know how many people show up hopefully a lot but uh that's where it could all go south for someone really quickly and we know how much shane loves his ovals But Shame seems to be in a groove. He has cut it down to under nine seconds to Luke. I don't know if he's going to have enough time. But putting in some really fast laps here at the end. As I said, though, Luke just put down a heater of a 109. Oh, nope. Just updated 111 this lap. So he made it back to down a little bit. Shane ran a 110. So he did gain about a second on him that lap. Joe's gap to Gavin it's shrinking but not quite enough it's down to about seven seconds Joe looking for a back-to-back -back podiums after the win last week at Quinn Ring Motegi which I wasn't able to broadcast unfortunately I was uh seriously ill and I don't know what it was I don't know what the fuel situation looks like for these guys but Brent put it on lap 10 I don't know if he's going to have to make another pit stop or not. Eddie pitted on lap 13. He might have to make another pit stop. But getting down to it, almost five to go. Gavin has cut it down to about six seconds to Joe. So he is pushing pretty hard. I'm going to go stir my mac and cheese, and I'll be back for the last five laps. Heck yeah. Big mac and cheese stir coming up.
All right, the mac and cheese has been stirred. The gap between Luke and Shane has stabilized at about eight seconds or so. Give Luke some well-earned uh, TV time here. Running the hell of a race. He's going to probably come away with leading the most laps. Possibly. We'll see. He's running nice and smooth. Putting in some good laps. Pulling back away from Shane just a hair. He's going to get four to go this next time. Bye. If I'm not mistaken, this might be Luke's first win of the season here. If he's able to bring it home. I don't want to give him no announcer jinx or anything, but. Oh, he's still pushing hard. A little bit of a uh, tire drop into the grass right there. Someone might want to tell him he's got a solid eight and a half second lead. Oh, he's going off again. Very close. Luke, you need to back it down, buddy. You got a healthy gap. I don't know if he's got the stream up. He was just talking about him or something, but he is getting a little buck nasty that last lap. I'll pick up Shane coming around turn one. I think Shane's best bet is just kind of bringing home in a solid second place. Might possibly gain a couple points on Gavin. But we'll see. Joe is still holding strong, but Gavin is under three seconds to him. I'm gonna hold it here and watch this battle. See if Joe Joe in the Gavin Rockchan fan car, if he can bring it home ahead of Gavin in the race. Looks like Brent did have to pit. We'll see if Eddie will have to pit, if that'll allow Brent to come back around and take fifth. Keep an eye on Eddie in fifth place. Looks like maybe the first half of the track, Joe is pretty much even with Gavin, but this middle section, Gavin gains on him just a bit. Oh, Joe flirting with the grass there. Gap this time by about 2.2 seconds. With about two and a half laps to go. I guess almost three laps for these guys. Again, as they say, catching them is one thing, passing them is a whole nother. I don't know how much of a fight Joe will put up here. But Gavin will probably catch him on the white flag lap as it looks. See if we can get a little on board with Gavin. Here we go on top of the roof. As he tracks down Joe. They're going to get two to go this time. Bye. Yeah, it's within a half second. Gavin may catch him on this lap. Joe's pushing wide. Gavin's going to catch him right here. Oh boy. Not much Joe can do. Gavin dives inside. Gavin's able to hold it. Goes around Joe. Good fight, Joe. Let's see. Does Joe have anything for Gavin here? Oh, bit of an off. No big deal, though. Just got the tires over the rumble strips. Man, these cars look so sketchy on this track. These guys are pushing it. 
Meanwhile, there goes Luke to take the white flag. We're right on board with him. I mean, not right on board, but you know, we'll watch him as he comes around to complete the final lap here. Drove a heck of a race. Had a little bit of luck, maybe, with Gavin, you know. Looping it coming out of the pits, but he was catching Gavin before the pit stop, so who knows. I know Gavin knew he needed to uh, have a very quick in and out. And that pressure. Been an awesome race, though. That pressure Luke put on him. It has been. It's very good. Couple more corners here for Luke. Looks like he has definitely toned it down a little bit on this last lap. Not pushing it. Keeping it well within the track limits. Just one more sweeping corner. And very nicely done. Congratulations, Luke. Good win. Good race. Very well done. Thank you. Yeah, good race, guys. Uh, come good around and see Shane. Shane. Great job, Shane. Good drive. And then come yeah, around. And race, boys. Hey, Joe, that was awesome, man. That was freaking exciting. Good race. Hell yeah, that was exciting. Yeah, good run, boys. I wanted to see Joe get that podium so bad, but good drive, Gavin. Good recovery. So there it is. Gavin third, Joe fourth. Eddie will come around and take fifth. Luke will take, or sorry, not Luke. Brent will take sixth. Thomas seventh. And Matthew Lindy will be credited with eight. So. Preliminary re looks is that Brent really would not have uh, suffered from that penalty. As he kind of had a big off right there. Early part of the race. So. Yeah, Joe, fourth is a hell of a run. And, uh, good race, everyone. Appreciate you all coming out. And uh, we got a pretty long break here. We won't come back and race until after the new year, January 7th at Auto Club. So hope to see you all there. Hope you all have a, a wonderful holiday season and uh, happy new year.